Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> Last week, we finished the Sutta uh, Turning the Wheels of Dhamma, <clears throat> which is the first Sutta that the Buddha gave uh, to the five students. Today, I want to talk about the Sutta that we make the chanting about. This is the Anatta Lakana Sutta, the characteristics of the non self. Anatta. Uh, I, it's negative, uh, Atta, it's self, Anatta, okay, Anatta, like, Anatta, it's non-self, okay, this is what we translate in English. And then, Lakana, Lakana, it's the things that belong to the world, in this case, we are talking about characteristics. Okay, Loka, Loka, it's word, around the world, okay, so, Anatta, Lakana, Sutta, it's the Sutta or the discourse about the non-self. And this has come from Samanita Nikaya, 22.59. <clears throat> like I said last week, we talked about the, um, the Dhamma Chakpa Vanatana Sutta, which is the, the first Sutta that Buddha gave, turning the world of Dhamma. We talked a long time about this Sutta. And the Buddha gave this lecture in Varanasi, in Saranat, to the five students, to his five students named Kundanya, uh, Mahanama, Badia, Bapa, and Asaji. Okay. And uh, they, at the end of the Sutta of uh, turning the world of Dhamma, Kundanya became Sotapan. But the other four, they didn't become yet nothing. They just was hearing it, and they was rejoiced, and they was happy about it, but it didn't influence on them more than this. And this was in the full moon of July, which is Asala Habucha, and the full moon of July. And the day after this, actually what happened is starting the rainy season. The Pansa, what you call in Thai, or Pasa in Pali, Pasa. And then this rainy season, they start there three months, and they stay there three months. But the next day, the Buddha starts actually to teach the meditation, show them the meditation, so they stay there and they divide two or three people, they go, three of the monks, they go collect food, and the Buddha stay with the other two and teach the meditation, and then the other three, they go, and then the Buddha teach the other two. And what happened is that day by day, every day, another one of them became Sotapan. But this is about because of the practice, he was practicing. So on the fourth day, on the rainy season, the Buddha have five students, which is so divine. No one enlightened him. So this was actually, like I said, in the so, uh, Kundanya became on the full day, on the full moon, and then day by day after this, everyone became so divine, one by one, one by one. So complete after four days in the rainy season, when they start in the Pansa, after four days, the Buddha had five Sotapan. They all ordained. When in the moment they became Sotapan, they ordained. There is, I think in the Vinaya, they mentioned that in the very first day, two people became Sotapan, and then the next day, another two people became Sotapan. But, so it's two by two. So it's, there is a little bit then in between the commentaries and of the Sutta and the commentary in the Vinaya, there is a little bit different. But let's say that one by one, and then on the fourth day, the Buddha had five Sotapan students. So on the fifth day, the Buddha, he give them the second lecture, the second teaching. This is the Anatara Tansi. These five students, they have, um, they have uh, let's say, analytical knowledge or supernormal power. They have very, very strong concentration, analytical uh, uh, knowledge. So that what happens is that at the end of the Sutta of Anarakana Sutta, Anatarakana Sutta, the, all these five students, because of this, let's say, quality that they develop in the past life, and analytical knowledge, they convert the change into Arhan. So what this Sutta influence on these five students, they all from Sotapan immediately you jump into our hand. Okay? So and this is only by hearing. 
So this is something like, uh, so now the Sutta starting with all this, what I just said, a little bit talking about what I told you now. Um, I want to share with you the Sutta and then Shima, please, you can read for us. Yeah. Okay, again, I'm choosing the equal body translation. Okay, never mind. I think it's uh, it's big enough. Huh? And you also just maybe we make it bigger a little bit, but I don't know. I think it's okay. So maybe. Uh, Shima, you can start to read it. That's what I heard. Okay. Thus have I heard. On one occasion, the Blessed One was dwelling at Baranasi in the Deer Park at Isipatana. There, the Blessed One addressed the bhikkhus of the group of five thus Bhikkhus. Venerable Sir, those bhikkhus replied. Okay, sorry, one moment. Uh, so you see now it was something like I introduced you to the Sutta, what is the occasion the Sutta gave. The, so this is how the Sutta start. So when I explain it, uh, the Sutta starting, uh, Ananda is telling that it was in the Deer Park, okay? And it's the Isi Patane or in the Banaras. Yeah? And then uh, the five students, the Buddha introduced them. And then the Buddha started to talk to the Sutta, this. The Blessed One said this, Bhikkhus, form is non-self, for if Bhikkhus, form were self, this form would not lead to affliction, and it would be possible to have it of form. <laughs> Let my form be thus. Let my form not be thus. But because form is non-self, form leads to affliction, and it is not possible to have it of form. Let my form be thus. Let my form not be thus. Feeling, feeling is non-self. Perception is non-self. Volition formations uh, are non-self. Consciousness is non-self. For if because consciousness were self, this consciousness would not lead to affliction, and it would be possible to have it of consciousness. Let my consciousness be thus. Let my consciousness not be thus. Okay, okay, we stop it. You see, actually, the Buddha don't. Okay, we talk about the sutta about non-self, but the Buddha say, "I am not exist. I'm not. A, there is no I. There is no, the Buddha don't explain like this the meaning of anatta." He compare many times, sometimes I want to explain about non-self, I say, we cannot really control everything that we know. Make it simple. See, even the Buddha here is making it very simple. So for example, I give you example, I have a slave, okay? I have a slave, and then I tell my slave, please go make shopping. And my, my slave actually, he go and sleep. So very funny slave, huh? She said, my slave, ah, I'm telling you, I'm a very nice slave. And then I tell him, my slave, go and I don't know, uh, wash the clothes. I want you to wash my clothes. And this slave, what is doing? Very funny slave. He go and make, uh, I don't know, uh, play football. So you see, it's very, very funny to say, this is my slave. He, the slave is actually not listening to me. So the Buddha, he, uh, explain about his meaning about non-self in this way that he say that actually I cannot control I cannot tell you in the Buddha he don't talk about I not exist or whatever the Buddha take the, the I and divide it to what is I I first we say body and mind but let's make more division of, of body and mind we have the body and what the meaning of my, the mind Okay, so the mind is actually, we have the feeling. It is like in neutral, okay? We, feel it. Mm -hmm. we have the memory, that we call Sanya, that we call Sanya memory of it, and uh, perception. And then we have uh, volition. 
it means I take actions. Maybe anger, worry, doubt, loving kindness, compassion. And we have also consciousness. Yeah? <clears throat> we see, so sometimes the eyes are receiving the information, but I don't pay attention. In the moment I pay attention to the scene, so it means the eyes consciousness coming. I hear you maybe the birds singing all the time. Oh, certain moment, wow, so beautiful song. It's mean in this moment, I receive the information from the birds, from the, the hearing, from my ear. So it's mean my ear consciousness come to me. Okay, so we have hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, feeling, and also thinking the mind. So the Buddha, he don't say I'm not exist or I exist or whatever. He talked about, first he make it very simple. He said, let's talk about who is I. I is what we call five attributes, five elements. Okay, body, feeling, memory, uh, volitional, okay, and consciousness. And then he explained about each of them. Okay, he explained of each of them why he say that starting from the body, why actually the body is non self. And then he explained it on the way that he said that I cannot really control it. It's very funny to say this is my slave if my slave never listened to me. So how can I say this is my body if my body is never listened to me in the same way? Okay, so the Buddha said that if I want my body to say, uh, be young, never be old, but it's not listening to me. And then I say, oh, I want uh, blonde hair, but why blonde hair is not coming? The body is not listening to me. It's my slave, but take things to say this is my body because I cannot really control them 100%, let's say. Some people say, well, but I can take it with medicine. I cannot. So we talk about this not so deep. We say, okay, I cannot control it 100%. It means 100% I cannot tell the body, give them order, be like this, don't be like this. Why they not be like this? I don't want my body to be sick. Okay? I don't want my body to be old. So I can tell my body, okay, I cannot tell them what to be. Maybe I tell them what not to be. So I, I, I can tell them, don't be old. Don't be, or oh, whatever, okay? Don't be disabled. For some people, they become disabled. It means that the Buddha is explaining, investigate the meaning of non-self. First, in the very beginning, he says, this is, I cannot control it. Because I cannot control it 100%, yeah. So how can I prove that it's not my, this, this is, uh, I cannot control it? Because if I could control whatever I want, I never make myself unhappy. I never make myself suffering. I never bring myself into the disease, not comfortable situation. Okay, affliction that will not suffer. But that's why the Buddha said that if the body was self, I could tell them be like this. Don't be like this, and then I will never choose the opportunity to make him unhappy. But in official things, it's make that you see. I, I will tell him, let my body be dust. Don't make, don't let my let my body be dust. Huh? But because I cannot tell him like this, what he's doing is leading to suffering, to leading to unhappy situation. Okay, but because I cannot command them what to do. So that's the what I explained. This is what I mean when I say it's non-self. Something like this one way to prove it as a non-self. <clears throat> okay. So in the same way, the Buddha say, in the same way I can talk to you about the feeling. The feeling is reacting the same way. I cannot tell the feeling be only happy all the time or don't be unhappy. But officially I cannot tell them, okay? So the feeling is changing by themselves in the way that they are changing as a nature. Also perceptions or memory, it's behaving exactly the same things. Sometimes I want to remember something, I cannot remember. Sometimes I don't want to remember, I wish to forget something, and then this comes in. So the reason would say you cannot control the memory one percent. So this is how can we say that this is a slave for you? It's something like, because you cannot control it. For this, okay, you cannot tell them what to do. So this is the way that the Buddha explained in this way in the Sutta. In the Sutta here, what the what he mean when he says same things, the volition formation, which is the anger, worry, doubt, lazy, craving, okay, and the consciousness. 
consciousness. Sometimes I remember when I was a child, I was working with a factory. My father, he took me to work with them in the factory. I was so amazed about how they make the, the bottles of plastics. Okay, this was plastics, uh, and they make plastics for containers. And it was looking so nice. Wow, how can they do it? And then the clerk, the, the car behind me, he's standing and he want to cross through. But I'm so hypnotized, you know, my eyes was attention to the buttons. And I didn't hear the, the owning of the car behind me. Beep, beep, beep. The man get anger so much. Isn't? If my consciousness was my consciousness, I could choose. Oh, I should listen to the other person. But something like the, the consciousness of me was so attracted the, the, into the eyes consciousness, so I cannot pay attention to other consciousness, which is very, very important. Huh? So it means that we cannot control in this way, that we cannot really, if my body was a slave, I could choose whatever I want. But <coughs> what kind of slave it would be for me if he actually do whatever he wants. I even don't know what he may want. Why, why I have to get COVID? I don't want to get COVID. But I don't know. COVID sometimes coming, sometimes not coming. Some people, they go to try to get COVID, they cannot get COVID. <laughs> Mixing with others, they say, oh, if I make a COVID, I will not have a COVID anymore. So they think like this. Then they go, they associate with other people that have COVID, but they don't get the COVID. Huh? Some people, they try so much, they put so many masks or whatever, but then they get it. They afraid so much from it. Okay? So this is one way when the Buddha, to, for the Buddha to explain to the uh, five students about what he means when he used the word of no now, he didn't finish. He explained to the students in another way also. He used another way how to explain what he actually means when he say non-self. So we go into this. Yeah, please. What do you think, Because Is form permanent or impermanent? Impermanent, venerable sir. Is what is impermanent suffering or happiness? Suffering, venerable sir. Is what is impermanent suffering and subject to change fit to be regarded thus? This is mine, this I am, this is myself. No, venerable sir. Is feeling permanent or impermanent? Is perception permanent or impermanent? Are vo volitional formations permanent or impermanent? Is consciousness permanent or impermanent? Impermanent, venerable sir, is what is impermanent suffering or happiness? Suffering, venerable sir, is what is impermanent suffering and subject to change fit to be regarded thus? This is mine, this I am, this is myself. No, venerable sir. Okay, so we like that. Yeah, so. You see here what the Buddha is doing to explain to the students different way what he means about anatta, about non-self. And to explain them, he makes some conversation with them. Okay, he talk to them, he asks them questions. And the first question he asks, what do you think? Is, and again, what he's doing, he don't talk about I, I'm not there, I'm not existing. He takes the I, and break it into the five aggregate and you explain about each of this aggregate. What do you think about this aggregate? Is it or not? Is this or that? So we first explain why the body, you can call the body non-self. And then he asked the question, what do you think body form? Huh? Form body. What do you think about body? Is it permanent or impermanent? And Something like, what do you think about the body? Is changing or not changing? So the students immediately, they say impermanent, it's changing. Well, before we was young, one time you're standing, one time you're sitting, one time you're, he uh, you're healthy, one time you're sick, one time uh, uh, you are eating, your body changes, uh, the temperature change. So many things in the form of the body changing all the time, okay? So then the Buddha asking, okay, so if the body is impermanent, let's talk about this the body, we agree that the body is impermanent. So these things which is impermanent, 
they are suffering of or happiness. So the students asking, answering suffering. Why do they have to answer suffering? Why things change? They are, have to be suffering. Because normally, first things, normally we don't like things to change. People, they like something to be very, very uh, steady. Huh? They don't want to do things change. But, but not only this. For example, what does mean the body change? We can be getting old. People don't want to be old. People die. We don't want to die. We don't want other people to die. But body is not only my own body. Yeah, we became sick also. We don't want to be sick. We want to be all the time healthy. But also body is outside by, for example, money. I don't want to lose my money. I don't want to, the computer will be destroyed. Okay? I don't want things which is formed to change. We don't like people die for us. We don't, we're losing work or whatever. We don't want food change, okay, finish. Huh? So all these things, things getting old, we are getting old. So we don't want our car to be old. So it means that things which is not steady, which is not, we cannot guarantee for them. Okay, so we normally we all think we want the things to go in a compound way. But if things changing, so sometimes they're good, but sometimes they are bad. And this one decided they are bad, we don't like. So that's why they answer, the students answer, the things we change, they are suffering. But for us, normally, as a human being, we like only the good, we don't want the bad. But actually, we cannot get only the good, because why? It change. So if sometimes good, sometimes we do bad. Like I said, people don't want to die. They don't want to lose friends. Huh? And if things change, they have to die also, decrease, to get, they must be sick. Huh? Because if they change, one time I'm healthy, tomorrow I will be sick. So that's why the answer is this. They are suffering. And then the Buddha continue, and they are, uh, uh, yeah. if they are actually impermanent, okay? If things they are ch changing, if my body is impermanent, and it's also suffering, can I, and it's subject to change all the time, okay? Can I say that this is, the Buddha asking three questions here. Can I say that this is mine? Can I say that this is I am? Can I say that this myself? So you see what the Buddha is doing. He's asking three questions. And there is a difference between these three equations. Because why? We are perceiving them, the me, in different ways. We have different way to perceive them. The first question, this is mine. This is mine. The computer is mine. My body is mine. It means what is here? What I'm talking about? I'm talking about the body in this case, okay? As with attachment. This is my, my glass. This is my thinking. So I'm possessing it. This is my tool, okay? I'm adding it. So in this way, the Buddha talking about attachment, all being. We talk about the body as a something that I'm adding, okay? This is the question, this is mine. But when you ask the question, this I am is talking about different position. Different way to perceive the I. I'm offer. I'm a monk. I'm better than you. This is with the ego inside, conceit. The self that exists inside my body, inside me, or whatever that is managing my body. Or, huh? So this is another point of view, is to look at self as a conceit, as a someone. Okay? as the amount of personality that exists inside and he measure himself. Soon I explain what I mean about all these things. Okay, so this is the second point of view or way to look at the, the self. And the third way that the Buddha say, this is what I am, which is wrong view. It's mean, why it's a wrong view? 
I'm so beautiful. How do you know that I'm beautiful? Because I have I, my body is very beautiful. It means the body is me. Okay? I'm the body. The body is me. I'm so clever because the memory is, my, is me, actually. If you see the memory, I have also oh, good memory. It means the memory itself is the me. I am remembering, of course. It's not only my memory. I am the memory itself. Okay? Same day, I am so ugly. It's because my, I, the body is ugly and the body is presenting me. So I am very ugly. So you see, it can be in a good way, it can be in a negative way. You know? So it's not only. It means uh, I'm good, I'm big person. So the people say, Oh, Schwarzinger is so big person. How do you know? Because he has a big body. It means he is the body. And she's so beautiful. She's, I don't know, supermodel or whatever. Why? Because she ever. Or Einstein was so clever. Why? Because the cleverness he is. He is pretending himself as a man. The cleverness, he could understand, uh, I don't know, whatever, physical things. Huh? So you see, this is three different points of view to perceive the self. Huh? In this case, the first one is my, it means I am, I am possessing the body. The body is my tool. It's the equipment outside that I'm holding it, adding it. The second way is the I inside me. Hmm? In this case, you can say the I inside me holding the body. So you see, but it's two different point of view to look at the same thing. You know, the first one is attachment to the self. Okay. The second one is conceit, the someone inside. And the third one is the wrong view, which think that what you what I experience here is the self itself. Okay. Maybe a little bit tricky. I hope you can understand the difference. So it's you see, one of them is attachment. The second, yeah, the first one is attachment. And this is uh, this is mine. Yeah. The second one is the conceit, and the third one is the wrong view. Now, if you remember these students, there are actually three of them so far. And what happened with the sort of mind? The first one, the, the, uh, the, uh, this is mine. This is we call Sakaya Diti. Okay? Sakaya Diti. This is something like belonging. And then the sort of mind is cutting this. Also, the sort of mind cutting, this is myself. The wrong view. But the sort of mind still have their conceit. This is I am. And how it's come to be. So Tapan understands himself on the way that he practices. So you see, he cannot control. Ah, oh, thinking coming, thinking going. I cannot really control the thinking. Oh, my body very hard, getting old or getting sick. And I cannot, I'm walking, I'm losing my balance. I'm sleeping. I don't want to sleep and suddenly I see. So the people that are mindful, they can see that they will not really control their body. They cannot control their memory. They try to remember turning, 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 touching. Oh, why am I speaking stupid things? I am supposed to make a rising and I make, it means they cannot control it. Huh? They have pain, they acknowledge the pain, the pain moves by itself. It means that they see that they cannot control. Also, they understand that they are not actually the body because the body is a process of changing. By itself. Also, the memory coming, going. Sometimes I can remember, sometimes I don't remember. So, the Sotapan itself, himself, is cutting the something like there is a self inside which is dancing with this five aggregate. This aggregate is belong to him, the body is belong to him, the body is not belong to him. He can control the body, he cannot control the body. Okay? So the Sotapan is cutting it. He understand fully. The body is just the process. The pain is just the process. That's why he take it more easy. He let go. He cutting this, uh, let's say, the attachment to this five aggregate, the memory. He will not, if he will get confused, he will not be shy. Oh, how stupid I am. Why I became, uh, I forgot what I forgot. Because I understand what the, this memory. 
coming and going by himself. So you don't feel embarrassed, okay? And then also attachment to, oh, I'm so beautiful, I'm not beautiful, or whatever, for example. <clears throat> because you're cutting this, we call Sakayadi. But the Sotapan, also Sakatakami, and also Anagami, still have the eye inside himself. There is some soul inside us that is something a relationship, dancing with these five activities. And this is something that I would say, maybe the, if it's a monk which still have, you will say, wow, the other monk, he can make chanting so beautiful. Why you have so good memory? It means he will compare himself to others. And that's called conceit, okay? The amount. It means I'm better than you. I'm equal to you. I'm less than you. And this kind of conceit, actually, we have nine kind of conceit, nine kind of comparing. I, I show you example how, um, how funny is it. It's the same like I will tell you a story that I go near the Amazonas, okay? And then the Amazonas, you call me, say, oh, 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 I'm better than the Mississippi. So it will be very funny. How can you say that you are better than them or not better? It's just the process of water changing. Huh? So in the same way, we are doing it. I say, oh, I am better, I am better than them, I am not better than them. So we have conceit, nine kind of conceit of uh, um, comparing each other. So for example, I give you officially the student is a student. The teacher, he finished the study, okay? So he is a teacher, he got the certificate. But the teacher will say, or the students will say, I'm better than my student. I mean, the, the, sorry, the, the students will say, I'm better than my teacher. So what he's doing, this is actually five and get changing all the time. But he could make I inside. So this person will say, I'm better than him. And this is why I'm kind of conceit. Okay? Any kind, it's like I told you there is no any way to compare between the Amazonas and the Mississippi. Yeah? There's two different elements changing. So we are also in the same way. And if support the students will say, I am better than my teacher, so we make comparison between two things which is not relevant. And that's why it's one kind of conceit. Now suppose the students will say, I'm equal to my teacher. It still will be comparing, it still will be conceit, amount. In making myself amount. I'm more, I'm less, or I'm equal. And then suppose the student will say, I'm less than my teacher. Still he make the same way, falling to the same way. So we have three ways that he can talk. I'm less, I'm equal, and I'm more. So it's already three kinds of conceits. Now suppose two teachers or two students, and one student will say, I'm better than the other students. He fall into the same way. Okay? Because it's just that we said process of body mind. Huh? <clears throat> he will say I'm equal to him, to my friend. I'm less than my friend, he fall into the same way. So it's another three. And then suppose the teacher will speak the same way. He say I'm less than my students. I'm equal to my students. I'm more than my students. He fall again to this concept. So it means that we have all together nine kinds of conceits. And this is something like I put myself on amount, how many I am, and that's why I'm less amount than the other person, which is no any relevant to do this. But we are doing it because we perceive the self inside and we are better or less. And this amount, it's come the words of mana. Amount mana. And mana is the conceit in Pali. The words of mana, conceit in Pali is called mana. Amount. And from these words come human being, man. Because the man, he has the ego inside and he compares himself to another person. <clears throat> so that's why it comes the word man or manososa in Pali. Okay? So you see what the Buddha do? He say that in the moment that something change and something is 
making suffering. How can you say that this belong to me? How can you say that this I am? How can you say that what you see there, it's actually yourself, that it's just changed by itself all the time. And you cannot make it only happy all the time. So it's just nature changing. Same like a stone changing. How can you say there is someone in the stone? Okay, so this is how the Buddha explaining this uh, in the second way, the meaning of what he called anatta or non-self. And then the Buddha continued, please. It's feeling... Uh, oh, no, sorry, we are here. Therefore, so, yeah, thank you. Therefore, because any kind of form whatsoever, whether past, future, or present, internal, internal or external, gross or subtle, inferior or superior, far or near, all forms should be seen as it really is with correct wisdom thus. This is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. Any kind of feeling whatsoever, any kind of perception whatsoever, any kind of volitional formations whatsoever, any kind of consciousness whatsoever, whether past, future or present, internal or external, gross or subtle, inferior or superior, far or near, all consciousness should be seen as it really is with correct wisdom thus. This is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. Okay, so you see again the Buddha is making the division between the, don't talk about the, the I, he talk about each part of the I, each uh, um, uh, aggregate that what normally we are saying as the I. The first is starting the body, we talk about the body. We say that it's not only that the body is not I and not my. You say, it doesn't matter when I talk about myself. Even if I talk about myself in the past, normally we say, ah, I was very young. When I was young, I was so cute. I was so nice. When I was young, uh, I was very good in the school. When I was young, okay? So the Buddha say also in the past, whatever normally we say, I am in the past. I was in the past. It's not you. It just was processed like this. Okay, in the future, I will be like this. I will be like, this. I wish I would be like this and like this. I wish I would be like this. Huh? So in the future also, uh, because it's just a process of changing things. And also in the present, now, this moment, you cannot declare I, me, this is me, this is belong to me. Because it's just a process of changing and it brings up. And then we will continue. First, we detect, detected with the past, future, and present. Then he may say about internal. What does it mean internal? Internal, if we talk about body, this is my body. I have so beautiful body. I believe I have problem with my kidney. Kidney, okay? I have problem with this, okay? Whatever. Ooh. So you think my so beautiful hair, huh? So it means uh, 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 my eyes so nice or whatever. So this is physical. I'm talking about body. Huh? And then some things. I have very good memory. I have very, very good intelligence. I am a very clever person. So this is mean internal. It's mean myself. When I talk about myself. And what is external? External is you. When I'm looking at you. When I look at other people. When I say, oh, this person like this and like this. When this, it's not my body, it's your body, it's out of me. So when I'm talking about your body, I'm talking about the external body. Huh? So this is another thing. Also, the external body, also you cannot say, this is, in this case, it's you, it's we, it's they. Huh? And then gross. Gross, it means uh, big, whatever big things. Hmm? Yeah? And then, uh, subtle, it means small thing. An atom, this is my atom, this is my air, okay? I can say big, but also small. When I say, but it doesn't matter. The big thing, the inferior, superior, okay? 
this is in this case you talk about um, uh, the something like uh, which is uh, higher and is what is uh, not so important what is important you can talk about important people or, uh, or not important people mm -hmm. far or near between maybe in another stars far Maybe you talk about ET, or uh, there is a people in another country, or uh, in America, mm -hmm. far or near, nearby me, my family, close family to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the Buddha say it doesn't matter which person or which people, what we perceive people, which is far or near, big or small. Mm -hmm. So they all. Just you cannot say this is the, this personality. It just uh, process of body and mind which is changing all the time. Okay, and then the Buddha say the same things about feeling, about perceptions, about the volition, and about consciousness. Okay, and then continue. See thus. Seeing thus because. The instructed noble di disciple experiences revulsion towards form, revulsion towards feeling, revulsion towards perception, revulsion towards volitional formations, revulsion towards consciousness. Experience revulsion. One moment. Okay, one moment. You see, the Buddha say, if the person, if the person see, seeing that, and talking about meditation, or the person which is receiving by insight, by understanding about insight. And you see, when the person practicing, and you see, oh, the body actually changing. And I cannot guarantee that it will be all the time happy, okay? I cannot re receive that only I feel good, whatever I want to have good way. So I cannot be guaranteed that it all the time will be like this. What will happen to the person he would have talked about Nibidayana. Nibidayana, which means like despair or aversion or disgust. Okay? There is no interest. So it means in using the attachment, the greed to this. So in the moment that the person sees that the body is not, for example, someone you see, I don't know, woman no more. Normally, oh man, oh, he's so nice, he's so beautiful. This one, maybe I marry and I will be uh, this man or woman. I mean, we have so nice time together and this. But if the person will understand about this, the thing changing, and then what? She will have a cancer or he will have a cancer, and then you have to be sick. So, why should I all these things? I prefer not to have problems in the future. So it means that the person that he practice, he see this kind of reality, how the thing change, and he will not be able to control. But also bad things will come to him. So he will let go to this on the way that he will get disgusted about this. He will not find interest about this. He says, why should I get problem in the future? But they are let go already. Hmm? So we buy a house. He say, ah, oh, so beautiful house, and then he say, but. This house has to be broken and I have to fix it all the time. Why should I be attached to this? Huh? So he let go. Yeah. Um, experience, exp uh, experience revulsion, he becomes dispassionate. Through dispassion, his mind is. You see what happened? Because you will get disgust of it, okay? You don't have any patience to it, any desire to it. This is the process will happen to the person when he's practicing meditation. In the very beginning, he gets into Nibidayana. He said, why I need all these things? What is this for? We attach so many people attach so much. Okay? Because he let go like this. So what happened? He will have detachment. Okay? In this passion. He don't interest about it. Wow, better I don't, I don't hold it. It's better for me not to have it than then to have it. Okay. Yeah. Through this passion, his mind is liberated. When it is liberated, there comes the knowledge. Okay, one moment. Liberated, the Buddha call it actually the word is vimuti. And the meaning of vimuti 
it means releasing or letting go. Okay? This is the letting go moment. When I say, ah, this is things better, I don't have it because uh, uh, the calm. If I will be attached to the calm, to more problem, I, I have to uh, to spend a lot of money with this. Uh, so people, they have no interest to have this kind of problem in the future. And then they let go. When they let go, they say, ah, I don't want to have it. It means they release it. They, they, first, they don't have the desire because they understand it's a very big problem. So they don't have the desire. When they don't have the desire, they say, I rather not to have it than I will have it. And because they get into letting go, what we call Vimuti, please, you can complete. It's liberated. He understands. Destroyed is birth. The holy life has been lived. What had to be done has been done. There is no more for this state of being. That is what the blessed yeah, one. Moment, moment, moment. So you see what happened, and the result of this bimuti is nibbana. It's vipassanayana. It's the maga pala. Mm -hmm. It means that the person became arahant. When the person will understand these kind of things, that nothing is worthy, worthy to hold. And nothing is really that I can say this is my only way I can control it or everything is bringing suffering. So the person will not desire to this, he don't desire to let go to this. When he let go to this, so in this moment he will be free for himself. So then the mind will be free. It means he uh, get into Arahanta, Maka, and Pala. But it's uh, something like the Buddha guiding this five sotapan into the Vimuti by themselves during the talk. <clears throat> okay, so this means that they, they get into new knowledge. <clears throat> yeah. That is what the Blessed One said. Elated, those bhikkhus delighted in the Blessed One's statement. And while this discourse was being spoken, the minds of the bhikkhus of the group of five were liberated from the taints by non-clinging. So you see what happened, they say, that they declare in the Sutta, the Buddha extent, that in the moment that they understood it, they was just here in the Sutta, the, the insight come to them, and then they got into a uh, hanta maga yana, which means that they, uh, they became enlightened. They let go into the trick kind of Clinging, okay? Clinging is in the tanha, the, the thirst, the tanha, the Buddha said the suffering is coming from three kinds of tanha. That means one of them is the kama tanha, the second is the uh, bahava, to, to be something, okay? And the third is the bibhava tanha, the attachment not to be. So in this moment when they was hearing and they cut by maga the three kinds of tanha, they became enlightened person. Okay? I just here the Buddha he used three forms of the clinging to the self. I want to talk to you just before, before finish. Four kinds of clinging to the self. Okay? We talk about aggregate. And how we perceive this aggregate as a self or not a self. So we have altogether four kinds perceiving the, uh, the attachment to the self. One of them is to say the aggregate as a self, okay? I'm, um, I'm taking the body, for example, as I. Mm -hmm. I am the body, like I said to you. This is one, one first, okay? When you see my body, you see me so big, which means I'm so big, so the body is me. The second one is I possessing the body. It belongs to me. Like I told you, this is my. The same, the mouse is belong to me. So in the same way, I have I inside, and this I have body. Okay. So it means this is like a tool belong to me. Mm -hmm. This is the second way to look at the at the, the relationship between the I or the attachment to the I. The third. The, the third, the aggregate, as in the self. It means there is an I and the, the body, for example, it's 
inside the inside the, the cell. Mm -hmm. the, for example, the body is a characteristic form. Uh, the body is a characteristic that present in me. Mm -hmm. Same like you say, the, the smell is inside the flower. Okay, the same is inside the flower. The smell of the flower, so it's presenting the flower itself because it's a characteristic of the flower. So this is another way that we are perceiving the, the cell. Uh, I'm big. It means that the big is presenting me. <clears throat> and then the fourth is that the self is in the aggregate. It means there is, in my body, there is a self inside. Okay? I'm, I'm the controller. So it means every cell, there is actually I inside. I'm feeling all that, something like, uh, um, uh, like you have a closet, and inside the closet, there is someone inside that is never changing. So the eyes. So all together, you have four kinds of way how people perceiving self as a self. So this is actually the second sutta that the Buddha gave. And like I told you there, the student who just was hearing the sutta, they convert the change into our hand, and from them there, uh, later on, a uh, friend of Yasa also joined and became uh, part of the Sangha. At the end of the Pansa rainy season, they became 60 enlightened people together, students of the Buddha. So this is about uh, the Sutta of the Non-Self. I will stop sharing. Anyone have questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question yeah. uh, about the nine types of conceit. Yeah. Uh, so I'm more, or I'm less, or I'm equal to you. <clears throat> yeah. But how does that, um, um, like just in, in normal life with uh, uh, relationships, all types of relationships, um, I, like how is that, for example, there is always di differences. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody, for example, feels they are uh, more or more than the other person, mm -hmm. uh, and equality, that's actually a question. I'm equal to you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Like yeah. Uh, on the level of, of uh, ma ma material, then yeah, there is maybe a difference differences mm -hmm. but on the level of uh, are we also not all the same on yeah. other level of course so you see if suppose i tell you that officially in this size we have a wall and in this wall there is one door or window okay let's say a window in this case and uh, it's all the all the doors and windows uh, on the um, uh, on this wall, it's a window. window. In the other side, there is the um, uh, wall, but in this wall, there is let's say uh, doors and uh, picture. Okay. Mm -hmm. You see, I'm not comparing someone better or less. <coughs> I'm just talking officially. <coughs> okay. I can say I'm a monk. This is how we perceive me. Is normally we say monk. But the problem is that I will identify with the self inside because it's the same like suppose this wall that have a window will come to me and say, offer, offer, I am better than the other wall. So for us, it will be funny. No? <laughs> Why we are laughing about this? Same like I give sometimes I tell the story about this, I make it like a story. I say, I go, you know, we are living nearby the Jordan River. And then I go, one time I go down, and then when I just walking nearby the river, suddenly someone told me, Ofe, Ofe. So, and then I look, who is this? Who, is, who, who talk to me? And then suddenly I'm looking down and I see the Jordan River is talking to me. I say, yeah, yeah, please, what can I help you? And then the Jordan River told me, Ofe, Ofe. Do you know I am better than Amazonas? So then the people laughing about this story. Say, so why are you are laughing about this story? What's funny with this story? Because it's 
In the river, Jordan River, there is no one inside. It's just the process of water was changing all the time. Stones or whatever, there is a fish changing. There is no any identity inside. So in the Amazonas, for sure, there is also, it's just the process of the water. In this case, it's a, it's a material thing to changing all the time. Now, if we look at ourselves, the body, we say changing all the time, okay? I cannot keep control it. Also, my feeling, changing all the time. I, mean, I cannot tell, oh, be happy all the time, okay? I cannot be, be unhappy. It's not control, something like this feeling is not thinking, and not obey to what I say. Also, my memory. And also my perception, uh, my uh, sorry, volition, okay, and the worry down. Also good things, loving kindness, compassion. I mean, I cannot say be compassionate all the time or whatever. And also my consciousness. It means that if we look in just a mental and physical process which is changing, and I'm not really the owner there, okay, but still I will say, suppose I'm. There is a big body. I still take possession thing of this body, and I will say, "This is my body. It belongs to me." Okay? Or oh, good memor memory. People say, "Oh, why you have so good memory? A bad memory." So still, I take possession of this. I think this is mine. This belongs to me. There is someone inside that is managing the things. But officially, we talk about it. It's just the process of changing. Okay? So when this process that is coming and there is a delusion inside that making the self inside better or something like I'm controlling everything. Right? Oh, how stupid I am, how I forgot this and this. Huh? You see what I'm doing? This forgetting or this memory, now i holding it as I forgot. I make the memory not good. And then what I'm doing, I'm, if I'm better than you, I have Two amount, okay. I have 100 offer inside, and you have maybe 50 offer inside. You less than me. Your memory is one amount, and I have more memory than you. It means what I'm doing, I'm comparing between your amount to my amount. And this is what we call conceit, because actually it's just a process. It's the same like I come. Compare, I say that the wall is more than the other wall. But again, it's two different things, which is, there is nothing to compare about it. The Jordan River is just a process changing as it is. And the other process is also, but you cannot compare to say that there is identity inside which is better or less. Then, then you fall into the concept. Now, if you talk, normally you say, Oh, you, for example, you will say someone that uh, the memory is very good there, uh, or is a very strong person or whatever. So then there is no any uh, comparing between one and the others. You, you got it? You understand it? You see, the one difficult to understand it is because the point of view that we already looking at the things. We are looking at the things in a special way, and now I'm showing you another way. So sometimes it's very difficult to look from the position of the wrong view how to see the right view. When we are anyway, we look at the things. Suppose I have a blue glass, and I have to think that the outside is green. So it's a bit, a bit difficult to see that. Like but I try to give similes. Uh, for to explain it. Yeah, I, understand? yeah I understand it a little bit. Um, I, I I can understand that what you are saying that um, I am less or I am more. It's a comparison, and yes. so therefore, equal being equal is also a comparison. Exactly, because and, there is no one inside to be better to be less. It's just a process. Yeah, so it's basically objective. The process yeah. is objective. Yeah. yeah. Uh, from that, 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 I can understand from a certain level. Mm -hmm. But what I am noticing is in conflict. <laughs> Conflicting is how 
to perceive it, for example, because there is so many hierarchies in, in the society with mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. um, there is always somebody better and somebody less. The mm -hmm. president has more and the uh, people. So how to perceive, and, and also with activism, for example, mm -hmm. then activism actually has no, also no uh, use mm -hmm. or no, be, like seen from the point of view that you just explained, mm -hmm. it's just an objective, yeah. objectivity. Yeah. You see, now, for example, you are the daughter and Papa also listening to us and your Papa. You are the daughter and his papa because according to the karma that fit this moment, this is something like the karma that bring you, it bring the president and bring you, I don't know, slave and there is the the owner of the house. This is because of that of the karma, good and bad karma that push you to be in the position that you are now. You are a woman, you are this, you are a daughter. So this is the karma that bring you. To the position that you are now and the president is a president because of all what happened to him as a karma with him okay maybe the king i'm not talking about president because i don't know some of them corrupted not corrupted the king born as a king okay so he's karma to born as a king why because of good karma you born as a slave or i don't know low society person because of your karma now if we are how to perceive, how to act with this, you have to make your, if you want to release your suffering, you have to act according to your duty in the society. For example, if you are daughter and is papa, you have to act according to good, to be good uh, daughter to your father. And only then when you have to accept your position, and to act in your position as a daughter to your father, then you will make, I don't know, the right action, the right livelihood, the right way to release from suffering, okay? The king is in the position to be king. He have to be good king. And how much he will be good king, this is his interest. Not he have to be good king because it's important, because it's nice, because his duty according to his karma to release from his own suffering, okay? So uh, the husband and wife, they don't have to be nice because it's important to be nice and all, blah, blah, blah. Because this is their duty if they want, according to karma, if you talk about the dharma, okay? The dharma say that you are in the position today according to your karma from the past, and you have to accept it. Okay, for example, someone, he, I, I practice meditation and I found very good, important, this is the Vipassana. But still, I have, I'm a son of my parents. And my parents didn't understand what the meaning of Buddhism. So I have to be patient to bear the situation, to give them the opportunity to grow up together with me. And the Buddha was very clever. That's why he said, you need to ask permission for your parents if you want to be mom. This is for example. Okay? So I cannot just uh, say, I want to be this and this and this. I want to complete this and this and this. Okay? To be in this and this level. It means if you want to change from your level, whatever you are, without comparing others, you have to complete your karma on the good way to make your duty on the world without, there is no one around the world, okay? You and the snake. You cannot fight with the snake. You have to send them loving kindness. You are a human being, the snake is sitting there, okay, laying down there. If you act in the bad way, so you will make damage. Maybe you would, uh, you would try to kill them or you try to make them run away or whatever. So. In this way, you will act on the wrong actions of karma. But if you send them loving kindness, you send merit, maybe you move another place not to disturb them. So then you do your duty as a human being sitting nearby and anymore. So when you are acting as a daughter to your father, you are acting according to your duty to your father. 
Huh? And doesn't matter. Or if you are a slave and there is an owner in the house, for example, the people in America at the time when they were slaves in, in, Ameri in America, they, if they found fight with this karma, okay, so they will act on the wrong way. So that's why they have to try to prove their way, but with their own karma in this moment. They cannot fight with India, you know, the greed and gratification will not help them to this situation. So they have to make the duty with their um, good mind and not bad mind. You understand? So that's why, of course, people became, some became poor, some people became rich. Okay? So, they can, if they want to uh, develop themselves, the rich people have to act with uh, good karma or good actions or good livelihood with their position as a rich. And the poor people cannot steal, for example, from the rich. Okay? Because then they create their wife. They are less than them. So we have to complete. So they go and steal or whatever. So then they create the next life. They, again, they will be free. Mm -hmm. But they don't have to think we are less than them. They have to think we are in this position, in this life, what we can do to prove our life. Without competition, without comparing. They just look at themselves, what is their position? You understand? It's answer you? I am not totally. Now I wonder that let's say um you let's say you're uh um you're married and your uh husband is um treating the woman um not so nice mm -hmm. or like less or um so does that mean to to respect that position as a, a woman like mm -hmm. is that what yeah not necessary, but if we want to make it, first we have to understand that you are, the, suppose I'm a woman and I have a husband which is uh, beating me. First, I got into this situation because of no accident, not because of nothing, because of some actions that I've done in the past that bring me today to me as a someone that someone ab abusing me, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, it's not mean that I cannot change it. But if I want to change it, I have to do it with a good mind. Okay? Not with anger, or not with take revenge, not with say, to blame. It's not because of him I'm in this position. I'm not a slave because of him, because of the owner. I'm a slave because of my own deeds in the past. You understand? I am a woman which is bitten now, not because it's very difficult. Normally people, they're very difficult. They are judging. E, abusing me. Because there is E and there is me. But if I walk on the street and the tree will break and fell onto my head, I will not blame the tree. I will not say that the tree beat me. Why? Why? Because I understand that in the tree there is no one to beat me. It's just something that makes the wind come very strong and beat me. But if the person, my husband will beat me, then I say, he beat me. Because in the husband, there is someone. You understand? So this is the, but we have to understand that in the husband, there is no one. There is just a process of body and mind. And this is very difficult to, to understand it. That's why we're falling into this kind of judging, comparing, blaming. Okay? But actually, the, if we, that's why many times people ask me questions about people. They make to me like this and like this. And then I tell, if you walk on the street and suddenly will come a cloud and uh, start to make a rain on you, would you complain to the, to the, to the cloud? You will say, blame the cloud. Why you make me watery? Why you, uh, this is not fair from you. It will be funny because in the cloud, there is no one there inside. And this is, I immediately I perceive it. Okay. Some, there is a story about someone that you go with the boat yeah, with the, in, the, in the evening, in the night. And suddenly another one come and eat him with the boat. Something like not careful person. So we start to shout. And shout, what are you doing? You don't see how you are sailing. 
why you are sailing like this? You beat me so much with your boat. And suddenly the fog go a little bit. And then the person saw that nobody in the boat. Mm. So he said, who, who I'm shouting about? So if you understand the idea of non-self, that we are just the process of body-mind, there is no one inside the boat. There is just a process. And also inside you, there is just a process. And it's very difficult to perceive. Huh? But in the moment that there is someone, I have someone to blame. To say, because of, of him, I'm in this position. But the woman, she gets bitten by the tree, not because of the tree, because of her, she, maybe she beat someone in the past. Okay, so she's in the position that the husband will beat her, not because of the husband, because her. Okay, this is very difficult and very helpful to, to hear, okay, because normally we are on the position to blame other people. Of course, the husband is beating me. Actually, the husband, what he's doing when he beat me, he creates bad karma for himself. In the future, maybe he will be a woman and then another husband will beat her. Okay, that's why he will come to this position. So we have to understand, ah, actually, what is doing? He helping me to pay my karma, okay? But it's not mean that I have to stuck in this position. I can change. And of course, in society like us, we can maybe go to advise with someone, a lawyer or whatever, and we have, we have uh, policemen or police to talk with. So maybe we have to take action. But not because I blame them and anger about them, because I understand that we try to change it. At least I try. So, like beating is, a, of course, a, 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 a extreme, um, yeah. a extreme example. But let's say it's a, a little bit less extreme, mm -hmm. um, but uh, not uh, serving. Um, mm -hmm. um, is it then that? You, you, because it's your, it because it's karma is arising. You accept, or you change uh, um, uh, the situation. It depends on moment by moment. But you see, if I wanted to make eggs to myself, and I come to the uh, to the how to say you know, the oven. Okay, I try to make a fire in my oven to make the. Uh, to make the to boil the uh, the water or to boil, uh, boil the eggs and then this eater didn't function it was not working okay so I wanted for my uh, husband to go to throw the rubbish but it's not never to my rubbish it's the same things <laughs> you see it's just another things that don't function like I want mm -hmm. okay uh, or oh, I, I go on the street and I'm sitting in my arm and then the water pick 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 I hear something that I don't like. So you can say, oh, but if the husband shouting on me and complaining on me, this is again, this is just hearing that I don't like, mm -hmm. okay? So you see, this is similarly the same things actually. But in the water leaking, I don't complain that there is someone. In the oven, which is not function, I will not complain that there is no one. So, but if my husband is not throwing the rubbish, there is suddenly my husband that is not throwing my rubbish. But it's something like functional things that is not according to what I want that it will be, or the voice that I don't like that it will be. So we expo exposed to nature to the, by seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, feeling, and, uh, and thinking. And when we receive information which we don't like, this is the BIPAC. This is called the karma that will come back to us. When we receive information that we like, this is also the BIPAC. It means we. Good karma come back to us. You understand? Mm -hmm. But some they say my husband not doing what I want. Another person will say my husband saying what I don't I don't like. Another person say that my husband is beating me or that I don't like. Now, if to change or not change, if the this woman or this man or whatever it doesn't we use just example of the man abusing the husband, the husband abusing the wife. But if the wife will be mindful, she will find the best solution how to change it into better conditions for her, into better karma for her. 
and violence will be not be there. It will be concretic and no will be any emotion. If you will, she really perceive it as not my husband telling me that uh, I'm in the abuse conditions because of my karma. So then she will use this situation and change it slowly, slowly, slowly into better for herself. Because she don't, it will not be something like he against me. It will be concretic thing. If you need to go to the lawyer, if you need to do other things, go police because the husband hit me or whatever. No. She don't follow the fear. Sometimes we need to change, but we follow the fear and then we block. Mm -hmm. I try to be alone sometimes because of this ego. What other people will think about me? So I'm not sharing with people and I have to share whether I'm, I'm hiding or I'm shy or whatever. So we don't even we need to do something to change. We don't do it because this ego blocking us to take actions that we can take action. We should take action. So it depends. If she will be mindful, she will find the best way how to solve this problem. That means you mean that um, if she will be mindful, uh, a solution will come, which might be going to the lawyer and divorcing. Possible. Or yeah, but as long as it's not from fear or driven by fear yeah. or anger or delusion. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. It can be many points. I'm not saying that people have to divorce. I'm not telling now what has to be done. But yes. I said that if the person will be mindful on the difficult situation, if he will find the most in, 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 I'll say intelligent uh, way how to uh, overcome this bad karma. Yeah, one, it might be uh, one might be going to the lawyer, but it might be also another solution. So it can be, yeah, possible. Maybe if the husband beating the wife, maybe she had to go to the police. Yeah. Maybe she had to go to the court, I don't know. Maybe, you know there be many ways out of, I don't know. Maybe she had to run away to go to her family. I don't know, many ways. But yes. if she will, uh, she will not act with the greed, anger, delusion, so she will take action because sometimes people are taking action, which is not taking any action. The fear, they're afraid from the husband, so they don't do anything and they let it be like this. Some they doubt, they follow the doubt. I should do, I should not do, I should do, I should not do. Some people, they go and ask other friends. So the other friends, they guide them sometimes wrong because this is their life, it's not the other friend's life. Yeah, so people like to give advice, but sometimes people give bad advice. So if she or whoever, it's going to be he, he, they will be mindful about this. They will take it concretic and not emotionally. They don't take the actions by doing anger delusion, by the wisdom and confidence. Then they take the best way out to change this karma. See, I even don't talk about to change, the, to resolve the problem. I don't call it problem. This is situation according to the karma they appear. This is a situation which is not nice. You're talking about something that I experienced bad karma. So this bad karma will be the best, the best solution for them or improve into better karma only if they use mindfulness and they will something like they send meta to the other person. They go with a good mind and not bad mind. Mm -hmm. Loving kindness, compassion. Thank you. You're welcome. Good. Any other question? Anyone want to know other things? So good. If no, we can pay respect again to the Buddha. <laughs> Aham Sama Samputo Pakawa O Tan Pakawa and Tan Tapiwa Sawakato Pakawa Tadamo Damaina Sam Tupadi Pano Pakawato Sawaka Sampo Sankanaman. Thank you. Yeah. Good night.
Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you so much for the reading. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Yeah, it's so difficult. I have a question. Yeah.